A man who dates a different woman every year. I don't do that. I mean, I, I've been with uh, a number of women, but it's been over a fairly long period of time. I've had great relationships with women. If you could have your choice, who would be the one person you'd date? Wow. Um, or who are the three about, most beautiful women in the world? Well, how about Lady Di? That would be an interesting one. She's going to be available for you. No, of not my choice. Like? I think my choice might be you. Look at the legs on her. Boy. <laughs> Can you imagine how controversial I'd be? You think about Clinton with the women. How about me with the women? Can you imagine? Well, I mean, I think there is a certain controversy to me, and I am single, and I, I do go out with women. While his family life may have been on the rocks, his business empire was crumbling. The headline was quite accurate. Welcome to the 90s, Donald. Because it was like he got whacked right in the face. It was amazing. Trump opened his third casino in Atlantic City in April 1990. Lasers, fireworks, and miles of neon lights provided the color as Trump opened the Taj Mahal Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. But just months after it opened, the Taj Mahal missed one of its debt payments, and Trump began looking for a bailout. His empire could be at risk of collapse if the New Jersey Casino Commission decides not to approve Trump's bailout plan. By the fall of 1991, all three casinos had filed for bankruptcy. The New Jersey Casino Control Commission has unanimously approved Donald Trump's bailout plan. That plan allows him to use his three Atlantic City casinos as collateral for a $65 million loan. In order to finance a loan, Trump was forced to sell off his airline, his yacht, and a chunk of one of his earliest projects, the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Manhattan. You know, I had a wife who was suing me for $2 billion. I had the banks, I had this, I had that. He did get to keep one asset, an undeveloped piece of land on Manhattan's west side that Trump had purchased in 1985. Trump had envisioned a huge project on the site, but in 1994, the real estate market fell, leaving Trump unable to make payments on the land. So Trump sold off the lots and made a deal where he got to keep some of the profits from any future development and to put his name on a few of the buildings, marking a new chapter in which Trump was less of a developer and more of a brand. Who knows better about hard times than me? I had a company, it was doing well. I had tremendous debt like this country. And in 1990, the whole country, it just went very, very bad. As his finances stabilized, Trump began to reclaim his status in the public psyche with publicity stunts like a 1995 Pizza Hut commercial in which he appeared with Ivana Trump. Doing Ivana. What do your people think? It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Then it's a deal. Yeah, the By the end of the decade, he was once again sounding like the Trump of the 80s, talking big about his finances. Back in the 1990s, you owed something like $900 million. Your empire was pretty much... Much more than that. You owed more than that? 975 was personally guaranteed. That was just the small part. That was the harder debt. But I owed many, many billions of dollars. And now my company is much bigger and stronger than it was in the uh, 80s. And flirting with a presidential run. Businessman Donald Trump tells Meet the Press that tomorrow he, Trump, is also leaving the Republican Party to join the Reform Party. He's considered the largest developer in New York. With his in 1999, Trump was on the verge of doing something that he had only hinted at in the 80s. He was about to decide whether he could really run for the White House. Running mate, if you decide to go at this, who would be the ideal running mate for Donald Trump? Oh, I think Oprah would be great. <laughs> Seriously. I think that uh, probably that would be serious, actually.